Hello everyone, today I will be solving some questions from EQA website for grade 9. So the first question says the square and triangle shown have the same area. So we have a square and a triangle. What is the value of n? So for the square, all the sides are same. I will write a equals to s squared mean side times side. The side length is given which is 12. So instead of s, I will substitute 12 and there is square. That means I can multiply 12 two times, 12 times 12. Therefore, the area of the square is 144 centimeters squared. Then we're going to find out the area of a triangle. And the area of a triangle is given inside the triangle, which is base times height divided by 2. The base is given, which is 8n. Height is given as 18. I'm going to divide this by 2. When I multiply 8 with 18, I get 144. And there is n next to it. Divide by 2. So I will divide 144 by 2 and I'm getting 72 and there is n next to it and then we can write centimeters squared. We will read the question again. The question says the square and triangle have the same area. It means they are equal to each other. I will write here 144 is equal to 72n. In order to solve for n, I will divide both sides by 72. Then I can cancel 72 and 72. Then we will divide 144 with 72 and we will get the value of n. The value of n is equal to 2. Therefore, we can say the value of n is equal to 2. The next question is, what is an equation of the line perpendicular to the line represented by y equals to negative 3 over 2x plus 1 and with the same y-intercept as the line represented by y equals to 7 plus 5x? So what we're going to do here is we have two bullet points. It means we have two conditions. I will take the first condition. It says perpendicular to the line. It means the slopes are negative reciprocal of each other. So first I will write the equation of a line. Y equals to mx plus b where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So the first condition says the perpendicular to the line, that means the slope are in negative reciprocal of each other. Therefore, the slope of the new line, so I will write here m nu, is 2 over 3. And there is already negative sign in this equation. And according to the perpendicular lines, we do negative reciprocal of each other. So therefore, it's positive 2 over 3. We get the slope which is 2 over 3 for the new line. Now we need to find out the y-intercept. According to the second condition, it says with the same y-intercept. That means I will write this equation down. And when we find the value of y, which is the y-intercept, we substitute x equals to 0. Let's see. So y equals to 7 plus 5. We substitute x equals 0. 7 plus 5 times 0 is 0. y equals to 7. So this is our y-intercept. So we can say, therefore, y equals to 2 over 3x plus 7. And that is the equation of a line. The third question is, the equation of a line is 5x minus 2y plus 10 equals to 0, which is the standard form. 
Which of the following expresses this equation in the form y equals to mx plus b? I didn't write all the options, so you can pick the option on the EQA website, but I will show you all the steps. So first thing is we will write the equation in the standard form or the given equation of a line. Then we need to write the equation as a slope and y-intercept form, which is y equals to mx plus b. So what I will do here is I will take all the terms without y to the right side and I will keep the y term to the left side of the equal sign. When I take positive 5x to the right side of the equal sign, it becomes negative 5x. When I take positive 10 to the right side of the equal sign, it becomes negative 10. And we need to write the equation as y equals to mx plus b. It means I will divide all the terms with negative 2. So let's do that. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. When I divide negative 2 and negative 2, it will be 1. I can cancel out negative and negative sign. So it's 5 over 2 and there is x. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 will give me positive 5. Therefore, you will pick the option that will show y equals to 5 over 2 x plus 5. The next question is, the total cost of purchasing t-shirts for the math club C in dollars is represented by the equation C equals to 20 plus 8N, where N is the number of t-shirts purchased. The club will order a minimum of 5 t-shirts and a maximum of 10. What is the range of possible values for the total cost of the t-shirts? I didn't give you the option again. You can pick the option on the EQA website. I will show you all the steps how to get the answer. So first thing is I will write the equation. In this equation, N represents the number of t-shirts it's given and C represents the cost in dollars. So they are asking us the range means the cost. So what we're going to do is we will substitute n equals to 5, which is the minimum order, and n equals to 10, which is the maximum order. When n is equal to 5, let's see what's the cost. Instead of n, I will substitute 5. So first I will do the multiplication. 8 times 5 is 40. And then I will add 20 plus 40 will give me 60. Since we know C is the cost, we're going to write the dollar symbol. And we are done with the minimum order for t-shirts, which are 5. Let's work on the maximum order of t-shirts, which is 10. Same thing. We will take the same equation, substitute n equals to 10. And then we're going to follow bad mass, which is order of operations. We will use the multiplication one first, 8 times 10, which is 80. Then I will add 20 plus 80 will give me 100. And then there is a dollar symbol since it's the cost. Then you will pick the option between 60 to 100. The next question is, what is the value of x in this diagram? So we have a triangle. It means there are three sides and three angles. And we have these lines on top of two sides that represents these sides are same. It means the opposite angles are same as well. And this type of triangle is called a isosceles triangle. So we need to find out the angles, the missing ones. In this case, it's x. Now, I will write the sum of interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. It means when I add all the three angles, it will be equal to 180 degrees. Then I will collect the like terms. 
If there is no coefficient, it means it's 1. So 1 plus 1 will give me 2. X plus 38 degrees equals to 180. Then I will take 38 to the right side of the equal sign. And I will change the sign. Then we will do 180 minus 38, which will give me 142 degrees. In order to solve for x, I will divide both sides by 2. I will cancel this out. And then 142 divided by 2 will give me 71. Therefore, x is equal to 71 degrees. The next question is, consider this graph, which of the following is an equation representing this graph? So first thing is, we should know what is the equation of a line, since it's a straight line. The equation of a line in the slope and the y-intercept form is y equals to m x plus b. However, in this case, x is represented by n and y axis is represented by p. So I will replace those two. Then I will solve for the slope. m is the slope. b is the y-intercept. So the equation for the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Then we're going to pick two points from the graph. So I will pick this point and this one. So the first point I'm going to pick is 0 and 6. And the other point I'm going to pick is 3 and 0. Then I will substitute. This is x1 y1 because that's the first point. The second point is x2 and y2. y2 is 0, y1 is 6, x2 is 3, y x1 is 0. 0 minus 6 is minus 6, divide by 3. Therefore, m is equal to minus 2. And I will substitute in this equation. So p equals to minus 2n because slope is minus 2. Then I will look back on the graph and I will find what is the y-intercept. By looking at the graph, the graph touches the y-axis at 6. Therefore, that is the y-intercept when x is equal to 0. And the answer is C. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like my YouTube channel.